Hi everybody. In today's video I'm going to show you a couple of new methods I added to my NuGet packages datajuggler.pixeldatabase and pixeldatabase.net. Last week somebody asked a question on Stack Overflow, how do you search for a sub-image inside of a larger image? And I opened my mouth and volunteered because I thought it'd be really simple because pixeldatabase.net already has some really fast methods for getting a pixel at a certain location. It's just like bitmap.getPixel at the X and Y location, but Pixel Database is much faster because it uses this direct bitmap. Turned out to be a little bit more of a project than I thought it should be, but I didn't have much to do this week, so I ended up writing in two new methods. And I'll go ahead and just show you the program, and then I'll kind of show you a little a bit under the hood of how it works. So let's go ahead and go over to my little program I have running here. Run Visual Studio. This is the this is on GitHub. It's just called Sub Image Creator. It actually should be called Sub Image something else like Search Tube. Now the one thing good I got out of this, the person who posted this, already had some code for taking a screenshot, so that's kind of cool. And I added this, so I'll just show you if you want to take a screenshot. It minimizes the form. I take the screenshot and then I paste it. This is actually a button. I call it Canvas, but it's actually a button. So I'm going to just show you if I click right here, I'm going to create some sub images. Now, I've got to look at my logic. I haven't spent any time on this, but I've got a bug. Because if I click here, I get a much larger image every time I do that. I don't know what's going on, but I've spent very little time on this little sample project. Now that I've got this, what I want to do is just click on search sub images. So now you'll see I'm in search mode is now on. So now if I click this, it's going to start searching, so give it just a second. Okay, so it's showing best results. See this little yellow little square I'd, rectangle I drew? I wasn't sure the best way to say this is where I found it, but I'll go ahead and just show you one more. Now, this is a 1920 by 1280 screenshot, so it's going to be a little slower. Now, this next one is going to take even a little longer because it's a little further down in the image, but hopefully it finds it also. Had a pretty good track record with, with this so far. Okay, so that found it. Now, I'm not really sure the possible uses of this. Possibly there's some forensic uses. I know I didn't get the job, but I had a surveillance company that does real-time video surveillance. And I didn't get the job because I didn't think I had enough WPF experience just because I don't like WPF. If I'd had this program when I interviewed, I may email the guy and show him because I do have some pixel knowledge that they might have appreciated. It was pretty cool though because they had video that could tell, like if a car went by and dropped a package off at a secure facility, they could tell that that package didn't belong by comparing the, the image that was there before. So instead of surveillance being after something happens, you know, go back and find out what it is. This was more of a real time. I didn't get the job, but kind of thought it was kind of neat for uh, surveillance. So what I'm going to do now is just, I'll shut this program down, and I'm going to go over to Visual Studio, and I'll just kind of give you a quick deep dive of how this works. So first, I'm going to go, I'll just show you the, how you load a pixel database. So if I just search for pixel database loader, and current document. So here's how you load a pixel database. You can pass in a bitmap, you can also pass in an image or an image path. And I could probably add some things for like streams or other way, but that seems to work for most of my needs. So this is the screenshot code I'll show you just really a second here. This is where I store a variable here locally just to get the current window state. It should be just uh, normal, but in case somebody maximized it. I don't have any code to size this app. I could have wrote it to kind of, you know, automatically resize. But this was a really quick and dirty little program I wrote here. And here's the code to get the screenshot. So it just gets the size of the primary screen bounds and it gets the graphics from that location and it just copies it from the screens. So I got one thing out of my time I spent on this little free project. This is where I set the button background image. That's all I do there. And then the next thing I'll show you is the create sub image. Uh, of course, I hate it when you kind of search and you type in your project. Create sub. It's not that accurate, but it's close enough for a demo. And this is just where I get the X and Y back to make sure it's in range in case you didn't somehow go out of the range of the image. And then finally, I get the top left corner of where you clicked. 
and then the size is going to be the subimage size, which is on our form. Which let me open up the designer. I had this little drop down here, and I I hard coded some values. I'll show you if I can find the in the init method. And here I just hard coded some sizes. This probably for now I default to this. That's how you create a subimage, which is very similar to if you've ever used paint.net. Let me open up paint.net and I'll just show you an image I have in my recent list. I was playing around with iClone and I was going to try to make a little video for the Timcast. IRL is really popular and they always say smash that like button. So I was going to have their video be called smashed by a like button. If you've never used paint.net, it's free and it's the poor person's graphics program. And I'll just say image crop to selection. So that's how you create a smaller image in paint.net. Now the same code would do that here. We got our rectangle in our top left and it gives me back a sub image. And then all I do is I have a collection of sub images and I'll just show you really briefly. Like if you look here, I've got eight little picture boxes and all I do here is a switch statement to say which one am I setting. Now I'll show you the search for sub image and that'll be the last thing I show you because this is the part that's kind of neat. Here's my class search result. Now, I've got a point, a score, and a confidence. I haven't done the confidence yet. The idea was I was going to normalize the score. So the highest, or the, the lowest score, a perfect match is a score of zero. And I'll go into the scoring here in just a second. But first, I just wanted to show you this class. So all I have is a score and a point. Then this class here in the Pixel Database, go to search for subimage. Figured out really quickly you can't search an entire image. It would it would have taken months for the first one to finish. So I rewrote it and I added a search depth. Now I default it to 10, but actually in that little sample program I set it to 16. It seemed to be fast enough. The problem with that is if you did have two images with like an all black background, that's not gonna work because you're gonna get the same value for both. Images that have any variances in color that'll give you a score and then the way I score it is first I get a collection of the sub image I call it search pixels so I load a temp DB as I go through here at each point I load a target pixels and that's the I get the same I guess you call it a list of 16 pixels or 10 or whatever the size of your group and then I want to score that batch of pixels and I'll show you this right here first thing I do is if for any reason I don't have either list I set it to like a really high number so I want that to not be the best result and also if I get different number of items in each list I want that to not be the best candidate and I just go through the score and I'll show you how I score a pixel let me go into score pixel it's pretty simple I just go through and take a pixel and I say okay give me the absolute value of the source red minus red green alpha and blue the same pixel being compared, you're going to get a difference of zero. Let me search for done. This is breaking out of the outer loop, but here on my inner loop, if I get down to a score of zero, the first match it returns a more in-depth search. I could return a list of all the candidates of zero, and then you go for a way to get that even further refined. But this was just a demo. It was mainly just a demo. Somebody asked a question on Stack Overflow. They wanted to search something to do with League of Legends, and I'm not a gamer, so I don't know what they were trying to do. I opened my mouth and volunteered to answer the question, and it turned out to be more work than I thought I should have spent this week, but it turned out to be a kind of neat little sample project, and now I have a new feature for the NuGet package if you ever want to create a sub-image or search for an image inside of an image. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or video suggestions. All right, have a great day.